Good morning and welcome back to Bible Talks. I'm Chris Kramer with the Northside Church of Christ here in Russellville, Kentucky. We invite you to worship with us every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock and Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock. Our building is located at 689 North Main Street. And as I always say, if you're familiar with Russellville, then you probably know where Kentucky Fried Chicken is. We are right next door. Bible Talks comes to you each week, uh, if the Lord wills, of course, on Saturday mornings at 905 on 610 AM and 104.9 FM. That's WRUS. And you can also uh, share it with other people and listen to WRUS at WRUSradio.com. So uh, tell others about the program. But you can also see a video version of this program on our YouTube channel. So what you want to do is just do a Google search. Uh, go to Northside Church of Christ, Russellville, Kentucky. You'll find our website. It has links to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. But most importantly, we want you to come down and be with us as we gather to meet and fellowship and uh, teaching of the gospel. And so come bring your children, bring your whole family. Let's study God's word together as we have classes for all ages. Uh, and um, you, you will you will learn and we'll be happy to assist you any way we can. If you're not in our area, certainly reach out to us. We'll we'll find you some brethren to worship with. We know people all over the world. So uh, we'd be happy to put you in touch with somebody that can encourage you in the area that you're at. But if you're over in the Morgantown area, just north of Bolton Green there, you can go by and visit Nick Greenman at the Christian Home Church of Christ. Good morning, Nick. It's good to be back with you after a couple of weeks away. Yes, it is good to be back. And uh, boy, it's crazy how schedules can get so churned up so fast. But uh, here we are able to be able to get together and continue our study on grace this morning and, and looking forward to that. And so uh, before we get into our study, just also want to give you guys an opportunity to know where I'm at and how to get in touch with me. And if you're in the Butler County area of Kentucky, then come on out to Christian Home Church of Christ at 3628 Lovely Road in, uh, in Morgantown, Kentucky. Of course, it's obviously out in the middle of the countryside, but it's a Morgantown address. So put that in your GPS system. It should get you to our doorstep. And we meet at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings for a Bible class and an hour of worship and evening worships 5 p.m. on the same day. Midweek Bible study is Wednesday at 7 at the same place. And if you want to get in touch with me directly, my telephone number is 270-999-2600. And then, of course, you can find our uh, uh, information online at www.christianhome.us. And so... Now reach out to us, get to know us. We'd love to study with you. All right. So um, opportunities to hear the gospel and uh, give praise to God. Appreciate the work that you're doing up there. All right. Uh, the past couple of weeks, uh, we diverted from our studies in grace. and We are coming to a close uh, of those studies, but we wanted to end the series with an important topic that is um, widely disputed among some religious people. I appreciate anyone that has the attitude that once we're saved by God, that we are assured of salvation. And I do believe that from the right perspective. Um, you know, we can we can ruin our relationship with God, though. Uh, and there's the Calvinistic view that you can't fall from grace. And so we're going to be talking about that today, uh, whether we get through it today or have to spend a couple weeks on it. Uh, we are coming to a close of our, our series here. And if we can clarify anything that we've already said, and you can go back and see the past videos of our discussions on this topic, uh, we'd be happy to add more to the studies. But um, let's start things off with a sign that I ran across on the internet a few years back. And I thought it was so funny uh, how a lot of times we put warning labels on everything, it seems like. Uh, there's a big joke that goes around in social media that says we need to start removing warning labels, and, you know, let nature take its course. But we sometimes have to be reminded, as we would tell our children or anyone, don't fall down, you know. <laughs> and uh, it's not that we purposefully would uh, strive to fall down. We may think it's obvious. Uh, we tell people don't fall when there's, say, ice on the sidewalk or a cliff. Uh, you want people to hang on. I remember seeing a movie years ago where the characters hanging on to the side of uh, 
uh, you know, this mountain, somebody says, hang on. And he says, the thought had occurred to me. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, you know, when we're grasping on for dear life, it's going to be an obvious thing, but we, we, we reach out to warn people, you know, that's what admonishment is. It's to warn people that we don't want to see danger befall them. And we tell them to watch out, um, even when it's just too late, uh, take a ball game. If a ball's heading towards somebody's head, it's like, watch out. And, you know, rarely is there a, an opportunity to react when somebody says that. And we live in such a cynical world today. And I get on to my family all the time about this. I'll, I'll warn them about something. I'll, I'll say, look here. And then a few minutes later, they look over and they're like, what is it you wanted? I'm like, you know, if this was life or death, <laughs> you know, we'd be at the end because, I, you know, I, I, I need you to pay attention now. You know, watch out now because now is where the danger is. And that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about putting ourselves in danger and overcoming that danger. And that's why I think God, you know, when you look at the Old Testament, especially look at the Ten Commandments, there's a lot of do's and don'ts. Thou shalt do, thou shalt not do this. And people tend to want to remove the thou shalt nots for some reason. And um, but the Bible says specifically in many passages, don't fall from grace. Don't do it. It's a choice that we make. And uh, when we separate our relationship with God. And there are many things that people will say in the religious world today. That if somebody does fall, which they do give account for, but they'll say, well, they were never really God's people to begin with, or they were never really Christians. And again, I would I would deny that, as most of these passages that deal with this subject are warning fellow Christians, the Galatians, the Hebrews, Peter to the brethren, uh, the Colossians. Um, you know, I'm just looking at a list here of Bible verses to Christians that tell them, don't fall, don't stray from God. And so uh, before we get into more of the text and the outline study, do you have any introductory thoughts, Nick, in regard to the subject? Well, you know, the idea that uh, people are not really Christians, uh, that that can be quickly um, corrected. Uh, you know, why would John in 1 John uh, chapters 1 and 2 warn them about sinning? He says, my little children, I, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He's saying, my little children. Obviously, he's talking to Christians here. And and so it's capable for Christians to sin. And what's the consequence? Uh, you know, if there's sin, you know, well, then there is judgment that is looming over you. That's why it's a good news here. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Uh, and, and so... You know, back in chapter one, he says we need to be willing to confess our sins, <laughs> and so it—it's, it, I mean, it—it's—it's—it's it's, it's a little frustrating, you know, how people will try to deny, you know, the obviousness of scriptures by trying to re-identify other parts of that equation, and and uh, sometimes, you know, just going with the simplicity of the scriptures is the best way to go, and people just like to make it a lot more complicated than it should be. Yeah, exactly. And of course, all they do is reiterate the fact that we need Jesus Christ. We're not taking anything away from the power of God. Mm -hmm. The gospel is the power of God into salvation. If I don't live according to that gospel, how can I be saved? God doesn't force salvation upon anybody. And unlike some of the Calvinistic views, he does not just automatically pick people randomly for salvation uh, and discard others. And so there are a lot of false uh, notions about these things. And again, and I'll reiterate, and I probably will a few times in the lesson like this, is we're not taken away from the power of Christ, but we are trying to abide by the design of God. Uh, It grieves God. You know, he wishes that no man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Could God have reached down and saved everyone and dragged everybody to heaven? Yeah, he could. But if he did this at this point, he would be going against his very word. And so God, in some ways, if you could just use the term limits himself in regard to what he will do, he wants people to come to him of their own accord and of their heart. And that's why we have faith. Anything other than that is not faith. Let's get into some of the text so we can look at some of these passages. And we're going to begin in Galatians 5, 1 through 5 is kind of an introductory passage because he tells Christians, this is written to the church, by the way to stand fast therefore in the liberty by which christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage so there you see in order to do one thing we must not do another in order to not do one thing 
we must do something else. It's one thing to say, you know, like the old saying years ago, say no, you know, say no to drugs or whatever. Um, but we need to put something, you know, back within our hearts, within our lives. It's like the examples that Jesus gave of the man that was possessed by a demon. Well, he got rid of that demon. He cleaned house. Everything was great. But because he did not put anything back into his heart, into his spiritual life, the demons came back, what, sevenfold, I believe. And the state of the man was worse than before. And that's why we need Jesus Christ, not only to cast out the evil and the sin from our lives, but that it won't come back. And when it does rear its ugly head, as you quoted from uh, 1 John 2 just a moment ago, we have an advocate with Jesus Christ. We can be forgiven of our sins. But he says, do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. Now, this gets into matters of the old law. A lot of these passages deal with the fact that people were trying to be saved according to the old law and go back to many of their previous beliefs under the law of Moses. Um, and he's saying, if that's the case, then what's the point of Christ? Okay. Uh, Jesus nailed the old law to the cross. Okay. So that, that's why this terminology comes up. But the application is still the same. We cannot seek any other law or way to be saved other than Jesus Christ. So he goes on to say in verse three, and I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised, he's a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, for you have fallen from grace. Again, I'm going to reiterate because I know people get this out of whack. We're not talking about just any random law here. We're talking about specifically being justified by the old law. So what this passage is not saying is that it doesn't say law doesn't matter. We have the law of Christ. That's what grace is. Grace is the law of Jesus Christ. It is his doctrine. It is his teaching. It is the very fact that he came and gave his life upon the cross for our sins. That was part of God's plan and design. We spent weeks covering that material. But he says, if you attempt to be justified by, in this case, that old law, you have fallen from grace. Now, you can't fall from something that you haven't been a partaker of. And so, again, getting back to your point, Nick, um, you know, the idea that I was never you know, saved to begin with, well, that just doesn't fly with these passages. He's warning this congregation here, don't go back to the old ways. Galatians chapter 1 deals with this in a lot of details and says, there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. And um, he says, I marvel that you're turning away so soon from him who called you into that grace. And so uh, verse five, just to clarify, for we through the spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. And you know, it's a beautiful plan. And mm -hmm. it's a plan that God gives me free will and choice to abide by. Yeah. And, and you, you've got it highlighted there in verse one on the chart there where it says, do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. So you're telling me that there was some liberty, there's been some freedom, there's there's been the removal of some shackle, and, and you can go back to the point of being shackled again. <laughs> I mean, what, what what's a better definition uh, for that you can fall uh, and that you can return back to your old ways? Uh, of course, I appreciate you bringing out the context that this is referring to going back to the law of Moses for your justification. Um, but principally, I mean, Yes, you can get entangled again in something that you have been liberated from in Jesus Christ because you just go right back into it. And, and so when you have rejected Jesus and you have embraced the old ways again, you are fallen from grace. And, and it's just plain and simple. Uh, the once saved, always saved. It's a false hope. And it is a, uh, it's a dangerous doctrine. And, and so I appreciate us having this conversation today so that we can expose some of that. Well, again, I want to reiterate, like I said, I feel compelled to, you know, over, over talk this thing because we are not taking away from the power of the Lord. Right? Mm -hmm. You stick with the Lord. You're fine. I mean, that, that's mm -hmm. just it. If you want to talk about, <laughs> and I don't I want to use the term once saved, always saved, because I know what people mean when they say it. But if I'm in Christ, I'm in, I'm saved. Mm -hmm. No, but being in Christ comes with responsibility on my part as well. And uh, there are many that leave Christ and leave that relationship with him. Well, let's look at some things in regard to the warnings to Christians. And uh, notice the warnings given that is uh, those who have obeyed and are saved, but are in danger of falling because they turn back to their sinful ways. This isn't something that happens randomly or by accident. Um, 
there are people that literally turn okay and we cannot say they were never saved the bible says they are and it's written to these people to warn them so let's look at this in kind of an outline form let's look at a few things that caused people to fall from grace and these are the same things that we see are dangers today and i mentioned this because i jumped ahead in my thoughts a few moments ago but galatians 1 6 through 9 okay Paul the Apostle tells them, I marvel that you're turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we, meaning you know the apostles, uh, or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we've said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. Okay, one, they had received it. Okay, they were called in the grace of Christ, and he says you are in danger of turning away. Okay, they, we already know they have, you know, I'll use modern vernacular. They have accepted that gospel. I believe they have obeyed that gospel. We are taught in these scriptures in Galatians that they had been baptized into Jesus Christ. So in regard to these things, you have a perversion of the same gospel, which he says, it's not another, but some have come along and what have they done? They've perverted it. They tweaked it. They twisted it. Peter warns the brethren about this when he talks about Paul's letters and he talks about people that would twist it to their own desires. So see, there's a danger that we could be led astray by false teaching. And it's not always about going back into the sinful world. It is yeah. sin, but I'm talking about, aside from, say, moral choices or immoral choices that you might make, I'm talking about straying from the gospel to a false gospel. Mm -hmm. You misrepresent God's word, and a lot of these letters deal with false teaching. Read Jude. Read the letters that John wrote. They're about, don't, don't listen to these false teachers. They have come to take you away. Ha ha. Galatians 1 is exactly about that. And he says they're using the same Bible that we are and they're they're twisting it to lead people astray. And you will fall from the Lord if your doctrine is not on par with God's will. I'm going to make this one statement. Then I'll let you talk a little bit, Nick, but I'm kind of caught on to a new catchphrase that I really like. <laughs> and we need to quit telling God how to save us and start pursuing how to be saved the way God wants us to be saved. What are your thoughts, Nick? Yeah, so in chapter four of Galatians, he he talks about how they have been bewitched. So they have been convicted. They have been uh, convinced. Uh, so, for example, um, uh, looking there in chapter four, just some of the highlights of the of the text. There, he says. They zealously court you, but for no good. Yes, they want to exclude you, uh, that you may be zealous for them. Uh, but it is good to be zealous and a good thing always. And not only when I am present with you, my little children, for whom I have labored in birth pains until Christ has informed you, I would like to be present with you now and be and change my tone, for I have doubts about you. I mean, what is Paul doubting? I mean, once saved, always saved. He doesn't have to worry about them. You know, or, uh, you know, hey, you know, they're sincere because that's another one, too. Right, Chris? People say, well, I've had a sincere faith. I'm genuine in my faith. Well, they have a zeal, but apparently that zeal is starting to be applied in the wrong place. And he's like, you got to stop it. Uh, don't be so easily bewitched and con convicted by these people. They are certainly not bringing the truth. And and so uh, it's even to the point where Paul is beginning to be made look like the bad guy. They're they're right. making they're making Paul look like the bad guy. And he's like, what are you talking about? And there was a time in my in in, in, the, in our relationship where you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me, mm -hmm. and and now that you are being bewitched, I mean, but, but you know, once saved, always saved. You're okay, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, well, it you know, falls you apart Paul's, yeah be honest Peter as well you look at the way that they come across to the brethren it's very uh, desperate i mean mm -hmm. it's uh one of the reasons i think the the letter of jude is so short and sweet and to the point is that he's in desperate times he's really trying to drive home the importance of the danger of this false teaching 
Mm-hmm. And as Paul said, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? And the truth for us today is found right here in the scripture. We're just quoting Bible verses here. There's mm-hmm. no way to misunderstand these things. You go back in Galatians uh, 4 where you were reading and you see them going back to idolatry. Okay. Uh, and then he says in verse 9, but now after you have known God or rather are known by God. Now that's that's exactly the argument of this being sealed kind of thing. You know, this blessed assurance that we have with God. God knows who are his, you know, and, and, and you know, he won't, he won't, no, he won't let us fall, in other words. But yet it says, after you've known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements uh, to which you desire again to be in bondage, as you mentioned a moment ago? And, and again, I don't, why would you desire to go back mm-hmm. to a life without God? Okay. Why would anybody conscientiously, you know, make that choice? And so I, I think Paul's terminology in Galatians is, is like, come on, y'all know better. And he's like, I'm amazed. I mean, just look at the wording. I marvel that you are turning away so soon. It blows my mind to think, why would you give up? the grace that you have in Jesus Christ. And, uh, and we want to encourage people to stay on the right path to continue, uh, in the faith. We have a lot more to cover here. We only have a couple minutes left of the program, but let's, let's leave on this particular point here from Hebrews chapter two and verses one through three, it is possible to neglect salvation. And and sometimes, you know, people don't even realize it. Um, the term neglect comes up a lot just in a sense of not taking responsibility for the things that are important in life. We can neglect our health. Uh, we can let, you know, things get away from us. Um, we can neglect our time and our time management. We can certainly neglect our relationship with God when we become lazy with study, when we become lazy with, um, you know, worship. Uh, how many times do we give excuse for things that we either have to do or I don't have to do this or have to do that? If those are attitudes that we take in our relationship with God, we're missing the point of what a relationship is all about. And if we neglect our salvation, which is what the writer of the Hebrew says, he's encouraging them. Let me just read. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? Remember, the writer here is talking to Christians, mm-hmm. and he's warning them, stick with that gospel that has saved you. Mm-hmm. Any last thoughts before we wrap up our show tonight? Well, yeah, just, uh, you know, some people might say, well, that's drifting away. You're not really losing salvation you're just kind of backsliding i've heard that term of course hebrews is where that phrase comes from um but in chapter three it removes all doubt verse 12 and 13 beware brethren lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living god but exhort one another daily while it is called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin yeah that removes any doubt of what he's talking about here in chapter two. And exactly. so uh, those are my final thoughts, Chris. And all these aren't things to just cause you to sit in fear. Oh, I could lose my salvation. So I should be scared every day. No, it's about leaning on Jesus. It's about showing that you do need Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is comfort in that. We are, we're trying to preach comfort here rather than the false notion that you can go out and sin all you want and still be saved. That's no, no that doesn't fly in the kingdom of God. All of this is about neglecting the salvation and turning to a a life of transgression once again. And uh, drifting away from God isn't, like you said, just a a casual laziness in our salvation. It's something that separates our relationship with God and puts us in a state of sin. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We have a lot more to cover in regard to this subject, so we'll try to finish it up next week. And I'm sure there'll be questions. Hang in next week and see if we answer those questions. If you'd like to send those to us, uh, you're welcome to email us, northsidechurchofchrist at hotmail.com. So we want to thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time on Bible Talks. Since I have been
Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in his name. Since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name.